Hello and welcome to a new series of videos where we're going to explore the introductory concepts of rendering with Mentoray. Uh, in this preliminary scene all I've done is uh, create these curves and with these curves we're going to be setting up a fairly realistic render of a glass with some liquid in it, a few refractive surfaces in a studio type of lighting environment uh, uh, that being pretty much this psych. And all I've got are these curves and normally because this isn't a modeling lesson I would have modeled out the whole scene uh, and had it ready for you but I wanted to uh, prep it and show you a few things. So let's look at the front view and let's look at these curves. These are the glass curves that I've made and as you can see I've made them in a few different pieces. And there's a reason for this. And, and the only reason that I'm, you could have modeled this whole thing and split it up, but I wanted to show you uh, uh, with the curves as well as a few uh, tricks for kind of converting curves to linear curves so that you can get uh, and control your polygonal resolution. So with that said, let's just get started. Uh, again, this isn't a modeling lesson, so I'm going to assume that you already have some basic modeling knowledge and uh, uh, or, or more than basic mo modeling knowledge uh, and if you don't uh, then this is probably not the tutorial for you. Okay so first things first let's look at these curves. These are going to be our revolve curves and as you can see they're NURBS curves, they're uh, CV curves uh, degree 3 um, as well as that one which is a linear curve uh, uh, and that's that. So what I want to do is if we notice let's, let's, just, let's just do it and take a look and see what happens here. And again, there's really no right or wrong way of doing this. There's a variety of ways. Um, uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select all these curves, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to select Surfaces, Revolve, and I'm going to select the options. That's actually up here under the Surfaces menu. I'm going to use Surfaces, Revolve, and collect the Options menu. The Options menu up here, I do. I want to revolve it around Y, right? Now, in this case, let's say Output Polygons. And uh, let's hit apply, and you can see immediately with the basic general options, I kind of get a huge mess. So I don't really like that. So one, I know I don't want triangles, I want quads. So let's try that again and see what happens. Okay, again, much better actually, but I mean, there's a lot of resolution that I'm not sure that I need in certain places, um, and I'm generally not in control of the tessellation, and you can also see that. The tessellation, if we put on smooth shade all and uh, wireframe on shaded, we can kind of see that the tessellation is a little bit weird and it's kind of like for maybe like a sub D type of setup, right? So I don't like that either. So I'm going to hit undo. Okay, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to set it to control points. And basically what that's going to do is that's going to use the control points, the CV curve, or whatever kind of curve you're using, an uh, uh, EP curve, I guess, uh, to define where the points are going to lie in the polygonal surface. So let's just do that and hit apply. Okay, so now you can see that we're getting a little bit closer to a certain degree in the sense of, I mean, obviously one, I could uh, come over here and increase the resolutions, right? And you can see though, if I look in the front view, it's a little bit bizarre, right? But if I hit the three key to preview the sub D version, you can see that it rounds out reasonably close to our uh, curve approximation. And this is a sub D service, so you either have to smooth in or render it as a sub D. Uh, and again, you know what? This is really once again, not the way that I want to go about it. And this is just my personal preference, so I'm going to undo all that. And I'm just going to come back here to our original curves, and we're going to do some curve rebuilding. Okay? So, in the front view, now this one I can see is too and I don't need to uh, rebuild it at all. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to look at that and see how the curve is placed. Now, I want a lot of points in the areas of curvature and very little points along those surfaces, which NURBS happens to be great at uh, providing. But polygons, unless you're using sub D's, isn't. So what I want to do is I'm going to select the curve and under edit curves I'm going to come over here and I'm going to uh, go to rebuild curve. I'm going to set it, 0 to 1 is fine, and then I'm going to set it uh, uh, to number of spans, I'm sorry, not number of spans, 
I'm going to set it to linear, which is what I want, and I'm going to, yeah, 0 to 1, number of spans in linear and uniform, right? And I'm going to set this number to like 200 because we want a very high res model here. And I'm going to hit rebuild. Now if I look, I've got a crazy amount of curves. So then what I can do is I can just come in here and start deleting the linear curves. I mean, the, 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 you know, the linear portions of the, all the points that define the linear portions of the curve. And just kind of do some curve cleanup here. Okay. So I'll come up here and just grab those. Okay. Let me make sure we don't grab that last one. Okay. I rebuilt that curve, just repeating the process, you can see. So I want to come in here, right? Delete those out. Okay. Just keep those. No, 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 no harm, no foul. Again, we're not looking for uh, extreme optimization here. It's not our uh, goal. Sometimes it is, in which there's other ways uh, of doing the same basic thing. This is actually a great technique that I use all the time in game production in order to get uh, good curves on polygonal models, where my models are, uh, where where it would be harder with with without doing it with the rebuild curve tool. So you can get even clean parameterization, which is uh, makes texturing a lot easier. So over here, I'm going to just Come up here. We don't. I know I don't need 200 there. Um, I'm going to say something like 60 would probably be fine, right? Yeah. I mean, even that's a little extreme, but whatever. For our case, it'll be fine. Um, this one has already been set. The psych curve. Okay. So now I'm going to come back here. I'm going to select all of these, and I'm going to come back up here into my surfaces revolve options. Okay. And we're on Y and I want to output polygons and I want to set it to control points because now we're controlling and kind of completely in control of the tessellation and you can see that we have a nice clean model right if I hit undo and select all those I'm just gonna come up here and increase the resolution you can use the middle mouse button if you have a, a, a something selected in the channel bar to just scroll back and forth. So I'm just going to scroll until I find something that I like. And, and I just I pretty much know that I'm going to want to stick with about 60 revolutions just because I know this is a high res object and that number will work for us. Okay, so then come back here. I'm going to just perform the same exact revolve. Boom, right? I'm going to come back up here and uh, I'm going to also say 60. Again, this, this isn't a sub-D list, and I, I, there's all different kinds of ways of getting something like this to render. Uh, this is just the way we're just outputting straight polygons here. Okay, so fantastic. So now that we have our objects modeled, the last thing I want to do is uh, I, do, I do want to kind of slightly change the shape of this glass a little tiny bit. So I'm going to come back to the front view very quickly and uh, I'm going to turn off polygons and I'm just going to grab these curves select all the CVs turn back on polygons just kind of move it up till I get more of like a whiskey glass shape what we're going for here here is going to be kind of like your traditional whiskey glass with a uh, the bubble like a Tiffany's whiskey glass the reason I want to do this bubble is uh, the bubble inside there is that so we can get a multiple different surfaces with different a few different colors like the bubble maybe we'll color that blue and we'll look at some different refractive qualities and we'll take this all the way up through rendering it with caustics and final gather and just looking at it as a way of exploring a few different ways of rendering uh, in mental ray Okay, so that's just it for basic lesson number one. And when we come back, we're just going to finish up these surfaces. And then we're just going to jump really quickly into re rendering. So let's just proceed to chapter two.